So what's made Catherine a hero of me personally, and for all of us at Climate Outreach, has been her determination, as we will be hearing this evening, to spread her science and her conviction to new audiences, which is very much close to our hearts in Climate Outreach. These huge areas of people who are not actively engaged. When you asked people, do you think this is going to affect you? Almost everybody says, eh, probably not really. But there's one question that even more people say no to than that. You know what that question is? That question is, do you talk about climate change? Or do you even hear somebody else that you know talking about climate change more than once or twice a year? Incredibly intelligent, smart, rational people can think that climate change isn't real, it has nothing to do with the facts or the data, it has nothing to do with the assessment reports that you can pile up to the ceiling, it has everything to do with culture, with who we believe, who we agree with, who we think shares our values. For me, the reason why I switched from astrophysics to climate science was for a very specific reason. It was because I felt that I could actually make a difference for people. Climate change is impacting people's lives, and the more poor and the more vulnerable we are, the more disproportionately affected we are by a changing climate, and that is not fair. I have a profound love and care for people that is tied directly to my faith. We're told in the Bible to love others as Christ loved us. I still remember the first time I decided that I should probably tell people, especially because most people in Texas would call themselves Christians, I should probably tell people that I was a Christian and explain to them why, as a Christian, I cared about it. When I did it, something amazing happened. People's faces changed. You could see that their attitude changed. Because we had connected, we had bonded over something that mattered intimately to us. It's not just about connecting with, with the, the values, though. It's also about giving hope. How do you find hope? I can tell you, you absolutely can find hope if you look for it. Where do we find hope? We don't find hope in science. That's not what it's designed to give us. We can find hope two ways. One is looking to other people. Do you know how much good there is going on in this world if we look for it? And the second thing, personally, and this is very personal, what gives me hope is my faith. That is the purpose of my faith. The idea that there is more, that there is the possibility for change. If we care about almost anything that most of us do, that's why you care about climate change. The only reason that we really should care about climate change is because it affects everything else we already care about. It's a human issue, and so everyone who's human has all the values they already need to care about it, and if they are a human who does not care about it, the only reason is because we haven't been able to connect the dots. Science can tell us what the impacts look like under a one and a half degree or a two or a three degree target, but science cannot tell us what's the right thing to do. That's where we need what's in our hearts, and for about 85% of us around the world, what is written in our hearts has much more to do with our faith, and for 100% of us, what's written on our hearts has everything to do with being human. So for the next five minutes, I thought, have a look around you, find someone that you don't know, that you haven't already talked to, and try and discuss what Catherine and George have been dis discussing now. I think, Catherine, if you've said anything important, really important tonight, is that connection with our heart, our hope, and our love for one another. Uh, we have a challenge for you. Climate Outreach wants the conversations not to finish when you leave the door or when you have one of the drinks we're supplying for you. Where have you got circles of influence that you don't like talking about the issue? Think about those communities. Think about how you can have a conversation along the lines of Catherine's. I think we really need to crack this thing of like how it's just normal when I'm having coffee with a friend and I sit down and we're just chatting about like how's life. I can be like, you know what, like I'm really, really worried. But we don't kind of think that we can have those conversations. You can maybe just got to like personally shift that into the space of what is, what is normal and what is acceptable to speak about for yourself. And if you do it, then maybe others might start as well. That story about yeah, overcoming the kind of chasm of different cultures 
and how she did that really did sort of jump me into thinking oh yeah you know what work could I have to do to reach this audience for example coming to it from a point of humility and of empathy and of sincerity it's good to have that reinforced and it's really lovely to have it heard from somebody who's done it so successfully